Hey guys, happy new year. <laughs> happy new year. I'm so happy to see you. First video of the year. So glad to be back after all the amazingness that happened last year. <laughs> uh, today we have a video about one powerful way to detox, to lose weight in the new year, to get healthy. And I brought on one of my amazing private coaches, Karen, to talk to us about this thought. Hello, Karen. Hi, how are you? Good. Happy new year. So glad to see you. Thank so you. One powerful detox to lose the holiday weight. I'm going to let you take over, but I just want to mention real quick. She's a private coach on my website for the eat to live lifestyle. And uh, we're giving you some gold gems today about um, detox. So let us know what your thought is. It might not be what you guys are thinking. So yeah, detoxing, right? Like, I think we all kind of know a little bit about detoxing and like the picture I always imagine is like sitting with a tall glass of like water with lemon in it and being a little bit miserable and or a lot that, miserable yeah, or a <laughs> lot miserable, right? Like a little hangry to be quite honest. Yeah. yeah. So I have a, a little bit of a different take on detoxing and the, the view that I want to take on it is actually a thought detox. Love it. Yeah. So it's kind of similar for like a, a food detox. When you do the food detox, what you're doing is you're taking out the junk food, those standard American diet foods that you're eating yeah. and you're putting in the good stuff, yeah. right? You're putting in all those fresh veggies and plants. Yeah. And I want to think of that thought detox in the same way. How can we get rid of those crazy thoughts going through our mind? Yeah. The ones that aren't helping us like, Hey, you know, it's new year is time for another resolution. You always fail. Like, do we really need that one going through <laughs> our mind? Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, my idea of this thought detox is how can we get rid of those thoughts and how can we put in some good stuff into our mind I for love this it. new year? I love it. I love it. So can you give us some examples of, so we've already talked a little bit about the bad thoughts, maybe the ones that aren't so helpful, but let's talk about I want to talk about what those thoughts might be and then how we can actually transition into those thoughts. Yeah, for sure. Well, here's the thing with those negative thoughts. So many times you don't even know you're having them. Yep. Right. Like they're just automatic. And a lot of times you just think it's, it's the truth. It's reality. Mm -hmm. And the way I like to think about that little voice in my mind that says stuff, like if I wouldn't actually say that to my best friend, I shouldn't be saying it to myself. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually talked about that before in one of my, I think it was a launch for the Academy or something. I was talking about the bully, the thought bully oh, who's totally. standing behind you, like <laughs> menacing <laughs> Right. as you're opening the fridge. I, I remember some of my thoughts were when I used to open the fridge and I would see maybe some pre-made oatmeal or a, a loaf of bread or something, I would say, I'd look in the fridge and I wouldn't even notice that this thought bully was, you know, breathing in my ear saying, you're going to eat that whole thing. Like you can't, you're going to start eating it. You're not going to stop and yeah. you're going to eat until you're sick. And you, that's just what you do. And you can't not eat that. You probably shouldn't have that in the fridge, but Hey, it's there. So you might as well start. And then I would start eating it. I would take the container, sit down on the floor, start taking a couple of bites. And by the time you knew it, that bot, that bully is still talking to me going, yeah. keep eating, keep eating. There's still some left. You can't not eat that. You have to finish it. Right. That's my yeah. thought bully. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then it's like, you're eating it and you're beating yourself up at the same time. Right. Really productive. Yeah. Like my thought bully likes to say what's wrong with you. Like that's like my knee jerk reaction. And I've started to realize that more and more as I've had my own coach and I've done my own yeah. um, self coaching yeah. and I'll catch myself now. I'm like, really? Like what's wrong with you? Like, that's not Ouch. like nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> kind of mean. <laughs> right. A yeah, little I, would, mean. I used to say like, um, so you have this thought bully, sorry, Moose wanting to be in the video, of course. So you have a thought bully. It's kind of breathing over your shoulders, telling you what to think or whatever. And so I say to myself, like this thought bully, you allow it to say those things to you, but just like you alluded to in the beginning here, would you allow that bully to say that to your daughter? Right. Oh, that's even better than your best and friend. And you're like, for oh, sure. ouch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just took it like, one step further. <laughs> Mama bear comes out and you're like, Hey, yeah. don't talk to my daughter like that. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Totally. And, and that's, you know, that's a great litmus test right? To ask yourself, would I say that to my child? Yes. You know, would I say that? 
Yeah. And, and so once you're recognizing those thoughts, we can start to detox them away, right? Mm -hmm. Like, are they super helpful? Yeah. Even if they're true, right? Like you tip, you, you always gain the weight back. Well, is that true? A hundred percent of the time? Usually right. it's not, right. but if it is, is it super useful? Mm -hmm. Not so much. Yeah. So, you know, it's a part of, of doing that. And I always do that with my clients, right? Like they don't even know. Sometimes they're just telling me like, like it's just the news, what's going on. So, let and, me, so let's do a little role play here. Okay. Let's sure. pretend I'm one of your clients. Now I've gotten over this issue since then, but I want to just pretend like I'm one of your clients and I'm like, Hey, which I have been one of your clients for quite a long time. So <laughs> this shouldn't be difficult for us, but I want to say, okay. Um, every time I open the fridge, I have this thought, like, I'm not going to be able to finish that. And I never like, it's true though, Karen, like every time I open the fridge and I, I always eat the whole thing, I can never stop. So yeah. what do so, I do with that? Well, I mean, like, how do you feel when you think that when you're opening the fridge in the moment, how does it feel when that thought runs through your mind? Powerless, like, like I'm on a speeding train that's <laughs> run away, <laughs> you know? Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and when you're feeling powerless, you already told us a little bit when you're feeling powerless, you sit down on the floor mm -hmm. and you start eating that food. Yeah. Right. What else are you doing when you feel powerless? Um, I having thoughts about what other foods I could eat right after this. So I'm not even like mm -hmm. enjoying the food I'm eating. I'm already planning. Ooh, there's yeah. nuts over there. I'm going to grab some of those. And then, Ooh, I'd like to have this too. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you're not even staying in the moment. No. Right. You're eating the food. You're making a plan for later. I'm beating right? myself up at the same time. Like, like I'm, I'm like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You really shouldn't be doing this. You you're and, and, and thoughts like you have too. like, this is so terrible. Why, why don't you stop this? Why do you keep doing this kind of a thing? Yeah. yeah. Right. What, is there anything that you're not doing when you're sitting there eating it? Um, I'm not, <laughs> well, okay. So I'm going to talk about it, I guess now from the perspective of someone who has overcome this issue now, yeah. what I'm not doing is being in the moment. Like we said, I'm not realizing what's actually happening. I'm not even <laughs> chewing, I'm right? Like, I'm inhaling, right? No, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not present at all. I'm just pushing the food down my throat as if I'm, um, and I remember you saying something like this in the Academy. Um, I think it was the Academy Facebook group. You said you can never eat enough. If what you're trying to do is get over a feeling. Right? You can like, never eat enough of something you don't want. Yes. Yes. Right. And so when it's not the food that you want. Exactly. Cause what I want at that moment is to get over the boredom or to, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to do this thing for work or whatever it is. Right. right. When the oatmeal is never going to fix <laughs> the boredom, it's never totally. going to fix the work issue that I have to do or whatever. And so I'm not focusing on what I really should be doing. I'm not, um, you know, sticking to my plan and things like that, that are obvious. But I think the one that for me is the biggest one that I noticed I never did before as I'm not, it's, is that idea of inhaling. I'm not even present. I'm not even, it's like, it's like someone just put on, you know, blinders and a gas mask or something. And it's just like force feeding me or something. Like I'm yeah. not even knowing what's happening to me. And then afterwards, that's where that question comes. Like, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep doing this? Cause I didn't even stop for a second to notice what was happening. So yeah. what do you do if someone is stuck at that place where they're, they know that they're out of control, but they don't know how to stop? Yeah. Well, for sure. The, the first step, and I know that everyone always wants to get to like rainbows and unicorns, right? But yeah. the very first step is to realize why you're doing it. And what are those, you know, what are those cues that are getting you to take that first step? What are you feeling emotionally, but also realizing every time I think this thought and I feel kind of cruddy, I sit there in front of the refrigerator and I do this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is it really that I'm after? And we kind of go from there, right? Yeah. If you are after, if your result is to eat on plan, tell me what someone would do. What would you do if you wanted to eat on plan? Yes. Yeah, so if I wanted to eat on plan, which is what I do now after working at it for a long time, by the way, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, um, I make the plan in the morning. So I say, mm -hmm. here's what I'm going to eat. I just, I have like little sticky notes like this that I just write on the sticky Perfect. notes. I'm going to have this, this, and this. Now I don't even have to do that anymore. Cause it's always the same thing. So I don't have to write anything anymore, but, um, I'd be like, I'm gonna have a smoothie for breakfast salad for dinner. And then I have some stir water saute in the fridge. If I want to eat that for dinner. 
So I have a plan already in my head. And then, um, so that's the first thing I do. And I make sure that that food is prepped. So I would have had to already thought about that a few days ago, like making Mm -hmm. that water saute or making sure I had the groceries in the house or whatever that was. Um, so that's probably the first thing I do is like plan. And then I just make sure that I'm, I, I think the biggest thing that I do is, um, my baby's over there. (laughs) So I think the biggest thing that I do during the day is I prep for those moments where I feel like I don't want to be doing the thing I'm doing. Okay. Because I noticed, and this is something that you would notice in private coaching, because I noticed it in private coaching that it was not wanting to do a task at work that would, it was like, I was transported in time to the fridge like, I was like, wait a minute, why am I in front of the fridge? Oh, because I didn't want to send that email because I was afraid of sending it, you know? Yes. That's like what we call buffering, right? Classic yes. buffering. Yes. It's like, let me avoid this Yes. by doing this. Yeah. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of an in-depth solution, but what I needed to do, and I had to get it with a coach. I could not like, I didn't even notice it, you know, because that's a lot. I think a lot of people have that where they're like, I don't even know how we get in front of the fridge. Like I I was just totally unconscious what I did. And so I had to uncover that and be like, find those things that you're trying to avoid, right? Like you're trying to avoid sitting down with your kids because sometimes you feel like playing with them is a little boring, (laughs) right? Or never, (laughs) never, no, not me for sure. Um, Or are you trying to avoid seeing so-and-so, you know, whatever it is, what are you, what is that emotion you're trying to avoid? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, if we just follow it up with what we were talking about is, you know, and you've already kind of accomplished this, but what feeling do you have when you take the time to make that plan and then take the time to follow through on that plan and eat the food that you've planned? How do you feel typically when you're doing that? Um, proud. proud, like awesome. It's like, and we've talked about this before you and I, Karen, about food and things like that and our coaching and then in the academy and all these other things that we do, the challenges, whatever. We've talked about the emotions that are useful when Mm -hmm. we're doing this whole, the positive side of this, which is like calm, peaceful, rational, you know, it's just like effortless. Like you just do the thing. There's no drama, but you also get pride out of it, right? Where when you're, when you're in powerlessness, hopelessness, anger, frustration, anxiety, when you're in all those things, because you're thinking you can't possibly not eat all the food and you're going to binge and it's going to be this big thing. When you're stuck in those ones, there's no pride whatsoever in there, No, but nobody ever talks about the pride that you get on top of the reward, the reward, exactly. Which could be weight loss. It could be healthy eating, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what this brings us to is when we talked about the detox, it's looking at the thought that's not serving you, which was what was initially happening yeah. and then putting in thoughts that serve you. So, you know, do you have anything that you tell yourself in that moment that makes you feel proud? You know, it's funny you asked that. I hadn't even thought about this before, but I, ha- but recently, um, I, I made my daughter some, um, vegan bean pasta, mac and cheese, and I put a bunch of veggies in it, whatever. So she had that in the fridge and I made too much of it. Usually I just make the half box, but I didn't even think about doing half of it. So I had the whole container in the fridge in an, in a container where you could see the mac and cheese. So I open the fridge and I see it. And I swear every time I see it, I'm like, Ooh, I could eat that, you know? Right. And then I have that pause where I'm like, no, not like you can't eat it, but like, no, that's not what you want. You actually want the salad. You actually want the other things. And so whenever I open the fridge now, and I see that I go, I I see it. I have that first initial, like, Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I have the better thoughts. And then I go, Hey, I have never been able to do that before. And look at me every time I'm like, I I'm just amazed that I could be the kind of person that could open the fridge see it and not immediately open it, grab a fork, eat the whole thing on the floor and it's gone. And I'm trying to hide evidence, (laughs) wash the dish real quick. You know, I'm so excited that I'm the kind of person now that can see a loaf of Ezekiel bread, um, Mm -hmm. some vegan Mac and cheese, you know, some, um, vegan butter, some yogurt with a little bit of sugar in it. Like I can see those foods in my fridge, pick out the salad and shut the door and move on. It's incredible. Yeah. It's that look at me, that thought that makes you feel proud. It's also, you know, like what you said before, I can eat that. And I'm, and I'm always telling my clients, 
you can eat anything you want. This isn't yes, about me sure. ever telling you not to eat it. And I love adding and instead of, but I can eat that and I'm choosing my salad. Yes. I can eat that and look at me. I'm eating what I planned. I love it. Right. So, you know, obviously like that's just a snapshot of kind of what we do, but the whole thought detox is really taking a look at those thoughts that aren't super great for your mind, right. That aren't giving you the results that you want and putting in thoughts that do. And it's not just thoughts, right? Like, um, it's listening to positivity and listening to helpful things and, you know, watching documentaries or programs that put positive, positive things in your mind. Right. Yeah. It's, I kind of joke about it, but you know, do you want to watch the bake on, on food network uh, about like cakes and cookies, or do you want to be putting in some positivity in yeah. your mind? It's actually funny. And this is maybe a little bit embarrassing, but you know, eat to live Academy is an eight week course that I created last year. It's tons of videos, like hours and hours and hours of videos. And the other day I wanted to go find something I said to see how I said it. And I ended up watching the whole video and I like learned all this stuff from my own videos. (laughs) And I was like, wow, I really was on the ball that day when I said that, you know, and, um, and I was like remembering stuff and it, it really, really helped. And it's just funny that even I can learn stuff from even watching my own videos, right? <laughs> we can learn so much from we rewatching like Dr. Furman speak or Dr. Gregor speak or whoever mm-hmm. else speaking documentaries, things like that. Like you're saying, yeah. Versus I've been having so many, um, interesting thoughts when we're watching regular TV lately. Cause we never, I've never really watched regular TV in the last few years. Cause I hate it because uh-huh. of commercials. Cause I'm like, I can't, I used to feel like I was out of control because I watched commercials, but now I think it's like, I just don't even want you to be showing me image of of your, yeah. Of your weird food porn, like burgers with cheese, like this close to the camera. Like it's so, it's so odd the way that commercials are. And, and we just are droning on allowing it to go into our brain. It's just such, it's the weirdest thing, food commercials. And, um, and so, yeah, what type of input do you want to have? Um, there is something to be said for being able to watch uh, those types of food commercials and working with the thoughts that come up, you know, being able to be okay with watching them anyways. But like, do you really like, is it very productive to be watching a show about baking or to watch the whole baking series? You know, (laughs) and where, where are you in your journey? Right. Like that's, I'm not going to like, if if you are completely um, a food addict right now and we are taking steps down the path. It's not like, let's put you in an, like, I'm not going to take you to your favorite restaurant and sit you down and just be like, today we're having water, right? Like that's just not deal with it. (laughs) Right. Like it's not the way that's not the way I coach. So, um, of course, yeah, that's the goal. The goal is to be able to watch the TV and to have the food in the house and not react. And I think, I think that's the beautiful thing to know is that that's available to you. Yeah the more you do this work, right? Totally. Isn't yeah. it so cool to think that you could go to a holiday, any holiday party you want, doesn't matter what they're serving, any party you want, you could go to the, the Super Bowl party if you want, where they've got the worst of the worst mm-hmm. food and still stick to your plan. Like just to be that kind of person that would never have to worry about having, you know, your favorite foods in the house because your kids eat them or your husband eats it or whatever to know that that's available to you after you've done this work. Life totally. And, you know, I have to say one of my clients who is just an amazing woman, she said to me towards the end of our work that she was able to go to a family function and connect with her family. And she hadn't ever been able to do that because she had always thought about the food for the, what am I going to eat? What are they yes. going to have? What if I eat too much? Like all of the food stuff. And she said for the first time I was able to just go and connect like, wow, you know, so yeah. That's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's what it is. Totally the goal. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Karen, for that. I appreciate that. And I want everyone to be considering your own thought detox. How does this come up in your life? Just start noticing. I think that's the thing that, first of all, people don't even know that this is the cause of everything, (laughs) that just your thoughts are the cause of all the things you're doing. So when we can just start to pause a little bit and see that thought bully (laughs) behind us, what are they (laughs) saying? That's a great place to start. So thank you so much, Karen, for this. Um, Happy New Year. I want to say to you guys, um, the way to work 
this into your life the easiest is to work with a private coach as we've been talking about. Um, and Karen and Nancy, they offer free 30 minute mini sessions for you guys to start uncovering this stuff about yourselves. And it's totally free. So anyone can sign up for one of these. I want you to go to the wateringmouth.com slash coach with Karen. Um, you can sign up on her calendar, get a three, a free 30 minute session with her. And she will start to dig into stuff with you to find out if private coaching is going to be useful for you. I mean, spoiler alert, it's useful for everybody, but you can at least just sign up for the mini session, see what you think about it in the new year. I mean, I don't, I hesitate to talk about like resolutions and all that kind of stuff. Cause that it, it has a connotation that you're just going to like do it for a while and not do it. But what we're doing and what my mission is to help you do it for life and to love it, right. Watering wealth, giving you the recipes and mindset to eat, to live and love it for life. It's, it's, if we're not doing it for that, why are we doing it? Right. So if you think that private coaching might be interesting for you, which I'm telling you, it will be sign up with Karen, at least do the 30 minute session, see if it's a fit. Um, and you won't regret that. We also are offering the eat to live family, which is coming up very soon. It's going to be a monthly coaching membership. You can sign up for interest. If you're interested in that, we can give you more details. That's opening up at the end of January, 2021, you go to, uh, info.thewateringmouth.com slash family wait list. We'll give you more information, but what right now, what I really want you to do is to just to sign up for a free 30 minute mini session. There's no, no risk. It's going to be super awesome. She'll be super nice. <laughs> if you can't tell she's like fantastic. And she was my coach for quite a long time. And I just can't say more about how wonderful that experience is. So hop on a 30 minute call with her. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. And happy new year. I'm, I'm excited to get all these thought detoxes. Yeah, for sure. Happy new year, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>